I'm so depressed that time. Mm -hmm. It was the most depressed countdown I've ever heard. Mm. You know? Yeah. The most depressed countdown by far I've ever heard. Hi there. Hi. Good morrow, everybody. Welcome to Tech Update. That's right. Good morrow. You're so grumpy in the morning. Dude, I'm not used to this morning You're stuff. so grumpy. It's like, you know, we, we, sh we show up at, at 8 a.m. to do this, and it's just like, you know, usually you're so delightful. Usually you're so happy sitting here and so jovial, and now you're just, God, you're just a big Debbie Downer. You know that? So anyway, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we've done this because I you took got off. married. I got married to some, you know. Transsexual some, well, hooker from the Philippines. Pretty sure. Pretty sure she's not fully transsexual. <laughs> Found that out <laughs> night of the wedding, unfortunately. But, right. you know, you take what you can get. Nice. It's all good. Nice. So yeah, so I'm back from that, and so we're gonna do some more tech update. Yeah. Uh, God, you're just gonna be this downer the entire time, mm -hmm. aren't you? It, I hate this early stuff. Why? What's wrong with you? I, you? Normal human beings have to have to operate starting at you know 7:38 in the morning. It's just the that's just the way it I is. Actually, I wake up at over. like 7:30 p.m. 7:30 p.m. is yeah. when you're is when you're ready to go. Yeah. Once the sun goes down, I start getting all like so you're like a vampire. Yeah. Why are vampires so popular right now? I don't know. Is this making me sound old to it's be like, why are vampires so? But they, <laughs> but they, like, all of a sudden, have yeah. you noticed that vampire, like, every, like every movie, every TV show, every book, every, like, everything is vampire now. It's cause, everything. It's because the little kids have Twilight and the adults have like True Bloods, and they're watching like, like both of, of those. It all creeps me True out. True Bloods is like the worst show, but it's so good. It's a. Uh, it's like a guilty I I, pleasure. I think I saw some of it one day. And it's getting, I couldn't. I couldn't take it seriously. Each season, they get like more pornographic. Like it's getting more like. I know. It seemed like it seemed like Dawson's Creek with vampires to me. Is what uh, it seemed like when I watched it. It's got a little bit of that. Yeah. It seemed like I, all I could think of was Dawson's Creek with nudity, Speaking, which would have been really awesome. Speaking of Dawson's Creek, have you seen a uh, Fringe? Yeah, that show's cool as hell. Fringe is cool. That's a cool show. Yeah. Time traveling. I finally am okay with Paisley being in yeah. it. I was really pissed at first. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> God, we could talk TV all day. But instead, <laughs> let's talk about this. Uh, soda. <laughs> For the, this, is, uh, soda. this is what separates um, the true nerds. Uh, from everybody else here, like if you if you buy this, this is this is what makes you a real nerd, <laughs> and it's it's Dungeons and Dragons spell casting soda. Nice, and it comes in uh, such delightful flavors as uh, uh, healing. Okay, obvious one, you know, duh. Uh, sneak attack. Mm. Big B's crushing thirst destroyer. <laughs> I like that one. Who's Big B? I don't know. I never played that game. Neither did I. Uh, Illithid brain juice. Dwarven drought. That might be my favorite one. Dwarven mm. drought. Do dwarves bring droughts? Is that like a? Is that like what happens? Like if you wake up in the morning and there's a dwarf in your room, then there's like a six-month drought on your, the way. Your grass is dead. Yeah. Is dead. I don't know. Uh, and Eldritch blast. Eldritch blast. Six. Six pack costs eleven bucks, dozen nineteen dollars for you. Jones said is uh, pretty good stuff though. Yeah, it is good, but God, because yeah, well, I guess you know gamers must be making up a serious block to be marketed to by the soda makers, because like you can go to the store and it's like, hey, Mountain Dew, Mountain Dew. for for World of Warcraft people right here. By the way, it's disgusting. There's more than one. It's gross. The than blue one, one the okay. blue one is horrible. Yeah, no, That's the one I, it was the purple one I better. The green one. The green there's a green one too. Yeah. It's just awful. Oh no, that's the Halo 3 one. <laughs> Shut up. There's a Halo 3 yeah, one yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, there's been. That was the first one that came yeah. out before the World of Warcraft. Right, so there for the I know, I know there's a few of you that probably saw this and went Ooh. <laughs> <Yummy>. <laughs> go, go buy it. It's available now. Have you uh spell You know what soda. IDF is, right? IDF. Intel developer swarm. That's where they have all the news. Of course, I know what that it's is. A I go every bed of chip I go, activity. I go rumor. every. I go every year. In fact, they. I sometimes I speak there. Oh they, yeah. They, they invite me to You're talk a, about the future. A of, senior demonstrator. Yeah. They, they invite me to talk about the future of processors. Yeah. There, I usually speak there every year, but this year I couldn't make it because I was getting married to that trans <laughs> tranny. God, I hope she doesn't actually watch this. It would be. <laughs> you know, I saw. You know, if she actually watches this, I'm done. Have you ever for. seen the, the Facebook fail website? Yeah. I saw a guy, he was talking about cars, and he's putting a thing on, and he wrote, uh, it's official, I blew two trainees this week. You know, talking about Right, talking about transmissions. <laughs> That's what I've been talking about this entire time, honey. 
All right, so check it out. Here's some news from IDF. Now, I'm going to talk a few things tonight, okay. today, but this is the uh, CE4100. So this is, you might like this, because this is Intel's uh, reply to Set Ion platform. Box, right? right? Yeah. This is them going against Ion, uh, basically, instead of using a Pentium Mobile, which is what they had in their older, whatever, chipset that did this kind of stuff. Right. They now have a, uh, an Atom in there, and it's going to be able to do the exact same thing that Ion does, which is decode two Blu-rays at the same time. Cool. So it's not a huge deal, but super low power, and this is what they're going to use to combat you know, ion platform, which they hate until right. hates. So this is this is going to be for like the next generation of like set-top set -top boxes, boxes and netbooks. Okay. But they say it's first going to come to DVRs and set-top boxes, which are going to cool. start becoming more of like home theater PCs. They rolling out any other cool stuff at IDF? Oh, dude. We're, you're we'll gonna, get to it. You're going to get to there. You're going to see there's plenty. Uh, All right. This one uh, is from the Miami Herald. This happened right here. Miami Herald. In town. It's going to gross you out, dude. Ooh. It's going to totally gross you out. Uh, you, have you seen the eye tooth story? The uh, eye tooth? You haven't seen the eye tooth? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> so check this out. <laughs> Apparently, they figured out that uh, one of the best ways to, one of the problems with, with developing prosthetics for the eye, all right, is uh -huh. that it's, it, the body wants to reject whatever it is you put in the eyeball, okay? It's right. like implanting something in somebody's body, and they've had a really hard time finding materials that the eyeball doesn't reject. Okay. So, some uh, some very smart person realized that if you take if you take a uh, a tooth, mm -hmm. all right, and you slice that tooth in half and you use that as a base for a prosthetic lens and then implant that tooth into the person's eyeball, then you can create a prosthetic lens for the cornea that will allow the patient to once again see without the eye ever rejecting the lens. And so they have rebuilt this chick's eye using one of her teeth. How crazy is that, dude? <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> like, like, it's absolutely out of control. Of course, obviously, not that attractive. No. It kind of has a Quasimodo Is feel that to it. Or after? That's after. Oh. Okay, so, you know, obviously, it's not a prosthetic that's going to make children comfortable. Sunglasses, sunglasses. Yeah, sunglasses, but, you know, dude. She can see. Chick can see again. That's pretty and, sweet. And uh, doesn't have to worry about taking uh, drugs to keep uh, her body from rejecting it at any point. Baskin Palmer. The eye tooth <laughs> is here. <laughs> it's like an Apple product. <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Here, uh, I think you'll like this. Just take a look at this okay. video. Throw it on. This is a, uh, a real nice big Intel laptop. It has four LEDs on it. Three in the front are OLEDs. And then the front is just a regular one, all multi-touch. Oh, really? Yeah. And so you can, you can pretty much have a, uh, you know, like your playlist on the front screen and just set up playlists as you go, throw things up, throw applications up. You can make your Photoshop palettes go there and your history and all that stuff and then be able to keep the screen free to do your editing or whatnot. I can see how that could eventually prove to be very handy. In the future, perhaps. Like as Software takes advantage of like auxiliary screens as you get used to using that and all yeah. that. I can see how how that could become quite quite cool. Is this a, is this a, 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 a is this something that's hitting the market or is this just no. a just a just that's, a IDF? Uh, they do a lot. Intel does a lot of stuff to show you like, hey, this could be the future. We could do this if we wanted to. Right. Um, just so everyone knows too, I'm sure that everyone out there already knows, but the 5800 series from ATI came out as well. That's a that's, that's a, high, a big a deal. Because, that's a big deal because it's we haven't high. seen any new higher numbers in a long time, right? Yeah. This is the this is the and this is actually a higher number. Yeah, this is the thing that happens. This happens like every 18 months or so, right? Sort of, this yeah. is when that the, when those next generation chips come out, and we're going from 4,000 to 5,000 here. So that's a big chunk. jump. This is not. 4,500 to 4,800. Right. This is not a 300 point jump. We're talking about a full 1,000 point jump here. Yep. Yeah. So uh, these are on the market now. They are. The now, first, but there's direct LX11. But, but there's new technology that's going to allow people that if they already, say, invest a lot of money into a GTX 295, right? There's some new tech out there, right? See how I'm leading into this for you? Because I knew you were going to talk about it. I, you know, there you go. There's some new tech that's going to allow you to say, Buy this hot new 58 whatever, 
and use them both together. That, that right? is very true. Now, the only thing is they will have to have a very specific motherboard. Okay. Uh, it's called the MSI Big Bang. They've been talking about it for a while, but it's finally coming to market. People are skeptical as to whether it works or not. Uh, it's called the Lucid Hydra 200, and it's basically a chip sits on your motherboard and basically uh, intercepts the OpenGL and the DirectX 11 commands between the CPU and the GPU, and then when it's sending it back to the GPU, it load balances them across all GPUs regardless of what type of GPU is. So like, as you can see there, they're using a, a GTX 285 and then a 4870 in, you know, they're using them simultaneously, but they're not using Crossfire, they're not using SLI, but it's using both cards. So you get unequivocal scaling, like everything scales perfectly, one to one. Wow. It could be impressive, but well, let's see if it works. That That's right around the corner, it should be coming out. So that's right I here. I mean, like if that comes out, that's a huge thing. I can Everyone imagine, because that knocks down the wall to let people start yeah. using multiple GPUs in their computers without having to worry about matching them up, because that's always been very complicated right. for people. Like, if you want to, usually if you go beyond matching up two identical cards, the, the waters start to get very muddy in terms of what you can pair with what. Right. And this makes it very simple for people. You just throw two cards in there, and, I mean, and that chip figures it out. I'm thinking that once that chip is in, it, and if it actually works, everyone else is going to be at a huge disadvantage. Like, all the other companies are going to be like, like scrambling to get this chip. Sure. Because I, I would buy it. Microsoft uh, had a, a new product demo sort of leak out, probably on purpose, uh, by the people at Gizmodo. Uh, have, you, have you watched this? <laughs> the pink phone? No, the oh. courier. Oh, the tablet? Yeah, the oh, new, yeah. This new tablet is one of the most impressive things that I've seen come out of... Microsoft Redmond? Yeah, in quite some time. Ever. I hope this is real. I hope to God this is real. <laughs> because this is pretty much the form factor that I've been wanting that I can carry around with me anywhere forever. Mm -hmm. All right? I didn't even know this is what I wanted. I saw this, I was like, this is what I've been waiting for. Yeah. All right? Uh, you know, this can replace ebooks it'll replace mp3 players it'll replace you know like it's just going to be able to be the perfect digital companion if it works like it does in this video and if it ever comes out and if it ever comes out but my guess is that we're about to see Microsoft and Apple in the near future probably release some stuff that's going to blow some people away. And mm -hmm. I guess the question is, which one's going to be more awesome? And, you know, this looks like it's going to be hard to beat. Uh, a very nice interface that pulls two screens together, allowing you to uh, seamlessly move data between applications. And it just it does so in a very slick way. Yeah, the UI is great. It's really awesome. So, I don't know. We'll see. I think we have until about sometime after CES. When do you think the tablet's going to come out? I think they're going to be... Do you think they're going to make a tablet? Who? Apple? Yeah. They I think are. they are. When, though? After CES, probably. I heard that... I think that's when we're going to start seeing all this some, stuff. Something like 60% of people um, that they, 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 they asked would buy a tablet. And they, sight unseen, not out yet. So it just, would that. you buy a tablet? And it was in the five to $700 range, and they said yes. If it, you know, if it works, like that's the thing. Like you can't have a well, tablet and work. use Windows on it. You know no, what I mean? No, no. Like it's granted, not, granted. Like that's not gonna work. Like, but like, we're talking about Apple here. I'm talking yeah. about a big iPhone. I think that they, I, I, you know, I, I don't know if I would necessarily get one or not, but it certainly does seem like it would be cool. I sure would. I've always wanted to. I'd rather have this to tell you the truth than well, a tablet. It's, it's, I'd rather have this thing. This, this tool. St yeah. This, this, yeah. this. I would rather have than a tablet to tell you the truth. I guess that's technically a tablet. It technically but is. it's it folds. It folds up, and you don't have to worry about the screen and you don't have to worry Cracking. about any of that crap, and I think this is a better, but... It's just kind of similar to a laptop. Yeah. That's kind of cool, though. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we've seen these supercomputers be coming out pretty popular, They're usually with those GPUs with the, the C1060 Teslas. This is processor-oriented serial computing power. Uh, this is the SGI Octane 3 supercomputer, and what you're looking at there are uh, up to 10 racks. Each rack can hold one motherboard. Each motherboard can hold two CPUs. So you can have two Xeon 5500 and Halem series processors per tray. And those have eight logical cores per CPU. That gives you 160 cores of computing power up to terabyte of memory. And then on top of that, if you want to run graphics cards, you can. They have graphic ones that let you run, like, I think four or five Tesla cards per rack. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, four or five per rack. So you can make a farm of these Wow. Just ridiculous supercomputers. I need one of those. Like oh, I, yeah. in my kitchen, like I'm I'm constantly looking for like new recipes on the web. That's a good way and to do it. And that would smoke the recipes. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. That's like my favorite thing to do is look at recipes and like it's really slow right now, but with that many processors Cores. and with a few of those <laughs> Tesla cards, that's all you need. Man, I could look up some baby back rib <laughs> recipes faster than anybody else in the street. Mm.
Sounds good. That's what I want to do. Google uh, has has come out with a interesting plugin for Internet Explorer. Have you what? seen this? All right. No. Um, they've been having an issue with, uh, with, you know, obviously a lot of people are having issues with um, a lot of corporate environments still using older versions of uh, Internet Explorer, typically right. Internet Explorer six, yeah. and it's uh, and and so. Um, <laughs> Corporate Google health. came out with a plugin that basically turns Internet Explorer into Chrome. All right, <laughs> like like basically what it does is it runs Chrome within Internet Explorer six as a plugin. So so Chrome becomes the rendering engine for Internet Explorer six. Oh wow! It's a sick, twisted world that we're living in now. That's crazy. All right? So if you if you're if you're working somewhere or for whatever reason you can't upgrade Internet Explorer six. All you have to do is get the Chrome plugin for it, and then you can run Chrome <laughs> inside Internet Explorer, so your web browsing literally experience might inside. be like, literally inside. Like literally, if you F11 it, now you're in Chrome, sort of. Literally inside, yeah. That's it's, really cool. It's the strangest thing I've ever seen. That's bizarre. We should tell it to all the people that work in like, like cubicle farms where they're just stuck in the. Well, corporate. I because well, the thing is, I tried it here and it didn't work because they ha I'm not allowed to install plugins. Oh. Uh, yeah. The, after the last after, after the last so they get you. after the last free recipe plugin I installed, <laughs> apparently it caused some. They were mad that you got the free recipe toolbar. Apparently it caused some trouble. <laughs> the free recipe toolbar is good. The Search one directly I downloaded, from your browser. Yeah, the one I I got was no good. All right, so here's a a, a really nasty overclock. Okay. Good. Oh, I've been waiting for. We're this. gonna talk about that. In yeah, a second. we are gonna talk about that. Uh, this is uh this is probably the most impressive overclock I've ever heard of. This huh? is the new. Actually, I put Core i7, but it's the Core i9 Gulf Town. Let me see if I can make this a little bit do you bigger. Have a, do you have a Core i9? No, I do not. I wish I did. How does this guy have a Core i9? Because he is don't. a world famous overclocker, and he got one. So this is the new 32NM. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. This is the IDF. World famous overclocker. He is. He's, he's the number number two overclocker in the world. <laughs> you can ask. You can ask 99.99% of the people in the world. To, to name the world famous overclocker, you're not going to get a single answer. Never. Ever. World famous is kind of a. Amongst the overclocking community. Oh, okay. There we go. Thank you for qualifying. Everything. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the this is the thirty the first Intel 32NM six core chips, and he got it to 6.3 gigahertz. Mind you, they don't usually get Core i7s over five point something high oh, okay. fives. Okay, so it's pretty high. Um, he got a Mark Vantage score. Mind you, the world record's 32,000. All right. He got. 51,000. Oh, he smashed it. He destroyed it. <laughs> that's a... Ripped it up. That's a... Dis that is just an absolute smashing of the old record. It sure is. Wow. Isn't that exciting? That is... I mean, you saw me perk up. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is... Uh, and you, were, you came running into, into my cubicle after you saw this with, mm. with, with excitement in your eyes mm -hmm. because this is something that you want to do now. Mm -hmm. Um... These dudes, you always hear about people launching uh, like cameras, still cameras with the balloons and getting the high, high altitude photography of, you know, of the Earth and whatnot. These guys uh, kicked it up a notch here. And what they did was they grabbed one of those uh, Canon Vixias, H Canon Vixias and, they, and they, you know, built a nice little box for it and they attached it to a big ass balloon and they, and they set it lofting towards the sky. Mm -hmm. And this thing got up to, what was the altitude that it got to? It was like, it, it was the edge of space. Why, it was like 7.4, I think? Yeah, it, it was like, this thing got so high. Check, check this out, let me fast forward it until it gets uh, up. This is, this is the view yeah. from the Canon Vixia. And if you go on YouTube and you search for this, search for the Bear 4 HD camera mm -hmm. flight, you can watch this in HD and the footage is absolutely beautiful. It's sweet. If, if the Canon people don't, don't jump on this and somehow use this as an advertisement for their, for their stuff, they're nuts. They're stupid, yeah. But this is... Boom, there goes the balloon. Yeah, there goes, that's the balloon popping. And then this thing takes the long, long flight back down yeah. to Earth, which I guess, I, I don't know how long it takes to fall from, like, from that distance. It's like 14 minutes or something, or 15 but minutes. It, it makes it to the ground. I guess they have uh, radio tracking on it because the people that launched it were right there waiting for it. Really? When it hit the ground. Um, in fact, at the end of this, you can actually, you can, it actually shows them s sitting in their, with their car over the side. But here it is. Coming in from its trip to space, how cool would it be to get this video yourself to Dude, launch something into the? Let's do it. What do you mean? How do you? I don't know how to do We're that. We're gonna do it. Where do you get a big balloon like that? MIT has all the get, all the directions on their yeah, website. MIT does. We're not MIT. It has it on their website. Where do you get the balloon? 
They have all the information <laughs> Where there. Where do you get it? The hard know. part is getting the hydrogen for the balloon. Okay. All right. But it doesn't matter. I mean, you're going to send something into space for 150 bucks. That is, that is sweet. Oh, and by the way, there's water on the moon. I heard about that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. There's water. Like, after all these years, I mean, we've been, we we've, like, we've we been there, we've right? Been there, yeah. like, we've actually been there. It was a long time ago, but we've been there. Other people have been there. Other people, we, we keep sending probes and devices and whatnot to the moon. And just now, we're figuring out there's water on the moon. And we're not talking about, like, a couple drops of water. Apparently, there's a ton of water. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of water on the moon. Like, real water, frozen ass water mm. on the moon <laughs> that we can use if we build a space station there which we should totally do colony they've they they've been talking about how the new the new strategy for building a colony on the moon uh -huh. is the, the people that go there don't come back never come back yeah it's uh what would you would you take that deal uh, no to live on the moon absolutely not neither would i you have to be a crazy Maybe bastard way in the future but not right now. Like you have to be crazy to be like oh, i'll go to the moon and not come back mm-hmm you know, because it's super, I'll go live there for the rest of my life. Super easy to get them there. It's just almost impossible to get them back. That's the big issue, right? It's hard like to get getting, them back. Getting back is the big because you you we, we can get we can get to anywhere we want to. But you we can send somebody to Jupiter with no problem. But getting you think home, you, after, were, you know, you know that's we the went issue. there. We made it there in the '60s. I mean, we were we didn't even have MP3 players back then. We and were I mean, yeah, we were a lot more. Driven and now the now 60s. we're so smart and we can't. We get don't, back? Because we don't have the commie Soviets to fight against anymore. What about the Chinese? That's why. Yeah, they're nothing. But like, they have a space program. The, the it's pretty good. Is we, the problem is we don't have the Soviets anymore. Like, that's what drove our. That's what drove all of our advancement in technology was wanting to destroy them. them. We, yeah, and they and they were and they were an equal. They, they were like our match. They, they were our match. Like that's what that's what drove our technology. Hmm. Was that was that was that you know that little skirmish. The Cold War. Now we don't have that. Now we can just lay back. Now the and private chill. sector's taking it's over. Like, it's like it's like Apple, right? Like Apple when they were going up against Microsoft, when like when they were kind of the underdog, right? Like they kicking ass crazy products all the time, right? Now they're on top of the heap. It starts to get a little boring now, right? Now you're not seeing as as much crazy advancement from this company. Now you just get little tweaks here and there every season to make things a little bit more interesting, but not necessarily big giant leaps because they're on top. They're on top, and they to. don't want to go any faster than they right? have to, to and make as much, much money. And that's kind of like where where we've been for the last couple decades, the right? We made it to the top. We beat, we beat the Soviets. <laughs> We're done. You think the private sector is going to take over while. now? That competitive edge? No. You don't think so? No. Well, they might. They want to do some pretty crazy sh They might, but whatever. That spaceport they, they're building is... Oh, the Virgin spaceport? It's pretty cool. It's almost... They're already, like, too bad actually... Too expensive for anybody to actually go to. Yeah, it kind of is. Um, well, How much is it? Like, 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 like it's like a half million dollars? Or no, I think, like, it's like it's less than, I think it's like a quarter million. It's less than a quarter million. I think it's $200,000. Well, if I win the lottery, I'm in. Yeah, I, I thought I was going to win the lottery yesterday, and I didn't. <laughs> really? That's, everyone always thinks that. No, but I Everyone actually... always buys a ticket and thinks they're going to win. <laughs> no one ever actually does. Yeah, I thought I was, though. How did you think you were going to win the lottery? I really thought I was going to win the lottery. All right. I don't know. I just had a good sign. Good feeling. Um, <clears throat> PCI Express SSD from Intel at IDF. I know this means nothing to you, but this is, this is a good number. So I, IT guys are going to like this. They demonstrated Jeez. the unit. Always want to make those IT guys happy. Four visitors to the tune of 1.076 million input-output operations per second. I don't know what that means. IOPS. I don't know what any of that means. That's like mind-blowing. Like, I uh, see that you wrote that is ridiculous. Yeah, I, yeah. I even wrote it because that's what I do on my blog. I uh -huh. write down exactly what I'm thinking in my head. Right. And uh, basically, they, they said the equivalent of that is with hard drives would be 5,000 hard drives. 5,000, they're... That's a lot of hard drives. ...making the equivalents of this with a PCI Express SSD. Hmm. I hate you. Nothing, nothing boring, doesn't excite you at Not all. Not in the least. No. I, I couldn't think of anything that would be less interesting to me than that, to tell you the truth. <laughs> what about this, this laptop holder that has a pull-out mouse pad? Is that smart? Are you serious? I, you know, I see. <laughs> Are you... Just... All right, just you were showing it to me before we started the armadillo. Come on, armadillo, right. and then let's get out of here. You want to see the armadillo? I want to see the armadillo, and then we we'll get out of here. John, uh, not, no, not John Carmack. Um, yeah, is it Carmack? I have no idea. Yeah, Carmack uh, is the, the guy that started ID. They've been uh, working on this um, this this space race, right? The the, the X Prize. X Prize. And the, the most recent. Uh, competition would, would be to launch this vehicle from one point and land it at another point, right? And 
This is um, this their is entry. this is their entry. This is the armadillo, and it's awesome. And it is completely rad. I love the X Prize. The whole the X Prize for the car, the one to make it to space. The whole concept. The lunar great. lander. To get lunar small lander. private companies to to develop all this technology. It makes me laugh though, because they're they're fighting. You know they're not fighting for the money. It's obviously they're making a million dollars and yeah. they spent you know fifty million making the. the Product, but the fact that they're pushing, you yeah, know, the this, development of it. Yeah, but this is going to be, I guess, uh, the idea is to create a new uh, planetary lander mm -hmm. for the moon, for Mars, for all these different places. And so they got it. They've uh, they won the prize. They successfully. No, 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 no. they didn't they, win the prize. I thought they won the prize. No, no, this is just their prototype. They haven't even started the competition yet. Oh. This is just the first one to take off. But I thought the whole idea was to be able to launch it from one place, land it at the other place. No, no. And they did that. That's what you have to do. And then all the ones that can do that are going to be judged to see which one's the best. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I thought they won. I think it's pretty dope, though. Oh, well. All right. So, are we good? I'm good. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. Mm. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Nice to be back. Good morning. Later. See you next week. Bye-bye.